for us all to wrap a new at 3.17 billion euros, up 4.2 percent year over year. Reporting third quarter sales up 4.8 percent. Franklin Golf Romeo. The Fed policy will be driven by piece of the data. Same policy will remain accommodative. The futures off. The session low, still down about a percent on the day, for a little more than four pennies. We can. We can see. All that. right. And I got the wrong thing up too. So, all right. This is a, a presentation um, that I've put together just over the last week or so, um, based on some research I had done and shared with Seth. We had a nice long conversation about it and really reviewed it. I wanted to get his opinion on, um, you know, his his experience in managing certain types of you know butterfly trades uh, specifically, and that seemed to be what would be the what would work best with the exact um, trade setup I was looking at using uh, an indicator. Um, my experience with SMB this last summer, I spent a few weeks there working with Rick Martin. He is in charge of the um, systems trading, automated systems and algorithms. And I went there to work with him to learn about understanding the best way to trend follow, because that's usually the, the worst enemy of uh, kind of a market neutral iron condors and all that is when the trend just moves too far in one direction. And I said, well, if I had a good trend system working together with a good market neutral system, you know, those two should complement each other so that, you know, w at least one of them is winning. In the process of learning all that trend system, uh, Rick taught me a bunch of tools on analysis and running algorithms to run certain tests. And I was absolutely amazed at the amount of data that I was getting from this. So I just kept pulling more and more of it together and doing more analysis and trying to figure out what, what's the typical move? What does the market usually do? What variables affect it the most? So that's, that's kind of the background of how I got from just trading normal option spreads to saying, what, how can I get more information, use more tools to pinpoint instead of just picking a, a broad range? Let's see if we get this. Uh, there we go. Here's kind of a pathway of topics I kind of want to cover, so hopefully we have an idea of um, what we're going to cover, and I'll try to stay on track as, as best as possible. Also, some of these uh, may, sometimes I may get into something that sounds complex, but I, I'll try to move through it quickly to get to the bottom line, because I know that's usually what we're here for, is to take away something practical we can use. And then, um, Seth, you'll be watching the chat, and if anybody chats in, you'll be able to let me know. Yes, everyone feel okay. free to pipe in and ask questions. Now, sometimes Andrew's going to know that he will be covering that topic at a later point, so he may not res you know, respond to it right away, but uh, we'll, we'll try to answer the, as many questions as we poss possibly can. Okay, great. All right. Um, initially, I want to discuss the difference between statistical trading and high probability trading. A, a lot of the instruction uh, books I've read and uh, webinars I've taken and um, use a little, in, in, took some of the invest tools, um, courses, and the, a lot of discussion about high probability. But I believe that will be in direct contrast to statistical uh, in the fact that statistical allows us to really focus on a toward mentality instead of a, an away from mentality. And we'll, we'll cover that more. Um, I will show you how I take general market data, throw it into Excel, and apply some formulas um, in order to get certain amounts of information that I can take later, um, build little calculators and things like that, and help me um, kind of come up with a projection in the market. So just a good way to measure market information, hopefully something you guys can use yourselves. Um, then I like to go over specific examples. So going back, applying options trades to this kind of directional information, and um, Seth and I have actually discussed a couple of times and gone through some of these trades just to confirm um, how well they work and what types of management would be best, what strike widths, and all those types of things. So hopefully we can go through that. Also, I, I did uh, program a, an indicator in TradeStation that allows me to plot exactly what the target is and what the range is so that we can visually go back and kind of back test what I'm looking at here um, and, and we can visually see the evidence and the proof of how this uh, specific rule can give us uh, some good expectancy. And then I um, want to discuss 
how using different types of statistics, I, I'm not recommending to anybody, well, not anything at all, because that would be giving advice and we can't do that necessarily, but I'm not um, suggesting that it would be a good idea to go purely statistical, but I believe this could be a little uh, boost in trading and also a way to uh, confirm if you have a certain trading idea or if you think something's overbought, we can actually look at that and compare it to the statistics and say, well, how overbought are we exactly and what has been the forward action after that? What can I expect? What has happened in the past? So hopefully we can, we can see how to make sure we use this as part of a, a general portfolio and, and uh, different rules. Thank you for watching this clip of our Options Tribe webinar. The rest of the recording is available on OptionsTribe.com. I'm Seth Freuberg and I've been hosting the Options Tribe since May of 2011. We've brought in options experts from all over the world to make excellent presentations to our members. So go right now to OptionsTribe.com to learn more about options education or you can send me an email at sfreudberg at smbcap.com.